Welcome. This is Money Heart, where we explore the emotional side of money. I'm Camille Diaz, and today we're discussing health is wealth. My guest is Len Glassman. He is a master level health and fitness professional, author, and influential speaker dedicated to changing people's lives from the outside in. Len, welcome to Money Heart. Hi, Camille. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and to pump up your podcast. Yay! I'm excited to have you here as well. It's going to be awesome. We're going to do some health and, and workout related stuff and talk yep. about this We're whole... Some poses too. Yeah. Oh, po oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, I know that you didn't start out in the health and fitness field. How, like, what did you do before? How'd you even get here? Yeah. So I was, <laughs> wait, 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 I didn't, I didn't catch that. An attorney. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Don't tell anyone you're an attorney. Right. My lips are sealed. This podcast. Yeah, I, everyone I, listening I, won't I, tell. <laughs> I'm a recovering attorney. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, kind of went into that for the wrong reasons, I guess, you know, mm. um, it was just something that I, I thought I should do, you know, instead of wanting to do. And that was a big mistake. So I, ah. had, you know, four years in law school, and 12 years in practice, and it just, it just wasn't me, you know, I just felt uncomfortable in the role. And that's a very important uh, lesson. If you feel uncomfortable in what you're doing every day, then it's not the right place for so if you, you really have to be comfortable in your own skin. And they always say like imposter syndrome. That's different. Being comfortable with what you're doing and why you're doing is, is equally important. So yes, I, I, I was in that field for 12 years. I learned a lot and you know, I learned about obviously writing skills and communication skills and negotiation skills, but it, it just wasn't something I was comfortable continuing with. Yeah. I love that you point out if you are uncomfortable with what you're doing every day, then you might be doing something that's not for you. I, I feel like there's people that just kind of suffer through thinking like you did, well, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, or this is the kind of career that I should have. Uh, and spending all that time just feeling like, I really don't, I don't really don't fit here. This isn't working out, but I have yeah. to say. A lot of people feel that way and they just feel stuck. And sometimes you know, it just, it just the, the opportunity arises and you don't even see it because you're just so myopic, you know, and yeah. in your, in your approach to life and work and family and health. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. So you got into the health and wellness field. How did you make that transition? Like what, yeah, was there exactly. a day that you were just like, Oh, I'm out. Or does well, it all just work that, that way? I was after 12 years of practicing at my last stint was like at a hospital. I was an officer at the hospital and lo and behold, you know, six months into that position, you know, with four assistants that I brought over from another large facility, we got laid off, you know, and just like cut off at the knees and devastating to me. And so I vowed never to put myself in that position again, where I was beholden to somebody else, you know, when it came to my occupation and my profession. And so I said, I'm just not going back there. Didn't really want to open up my own practice. Long story short, um, this woman that I knew and her husband, they were serial entrepreneurs. So they opened up, they had opened up all these different types of businesses First, you know, small businesses, a movie theater, you know, their whole life they had just been entrepreneurs. And I stumbled into and upon this opportunity in 2000 um, with uh, about the idea of personal training. And she was in the process of opening up a personal training studio at the time. And we literally, I was walking out the door the day after I was laid off. I was walking into the door of my local gym. She was walking out middle of the day. We had spoken to each other on the weekends off and on. And she looked at me and she was very outspoken. She goes, Glenn, what are you doing here in the middle of the day? Would you lose your job? And I was like, uh, yeah, I just lost my job. Yeah. Said, oh my goodness. And she had on this vest and it said personal vest. And I said, Oh, and what, you know, what is this personal vest? What is this that you're wearing? Oh, well, me and Hutt, my husband, Chuck, we're going to be opening up this new training studio and it's going to be really exciting. And we're going to be teaching and educating people about fitness and health and everything. And I looked at her and I'm like, you're going to get paid to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm like, 
you mean people will pay you that? Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Never looked back after that. Oh, that that's awesome. 2000. So, I've been doing it 22 years now, and I love every minute of it. What a wonderful, like serendipitous meeting of, you know, you're walking into the gym, she's walking out of the gym and thank goodness she said like, Hey, what are you doing here in the middle of the day? What's up with that? Like, that's so cool. So true. You know, it was like a movie scene, you know, it was raining too, you know, and I'm just like, what are the chances? You know, and I went back and and I spoke to my family, like, remember when you said to me, I could do anything I want as long as I was happy. And I was like, this is it. This is what I, I was meant to be. It was just yeah. something that was in my DNA and I didn't even know it. I loved sports. I loved playing sports. I was overweight as a kid. Mm-hmm. had a lot of self-esteem issues. You know, I just never felt confident in my body. And I, that was really the impetus to get me into exercise. And you know, I would always use exercise as a way to kind of keep me upbeat and keep me focused. And, and I know it sounds kind of corny, but exercise was always my best friend. It, it, exercise never let me down. Like it always made me feel good. I felt like crap sometimes and I would work out and I would have this totally new outlook. And I use that then to parlay that into an occupation and in my work ethic. Is if you have a strong health fitness ethic, it translates into a strong work ethic. That is a great point. I think that's one of the things that people might not realize is so valuable about kids playing sports and doing, you know, various kinds of activities is that it does build that resilience and work ethic and determination to do things and stuff like that. Yeah, it totally, totally carries over. So that's, that's super cool. Yeah, I love that. And I love how it, you also mentioned it is so great for your mental health. Yeah, like it's, absolutely. It, yeah, it, un, undoubtedly that has been a savior for me. Honestly, it's it's just for me being you know physically resilient translates into being mentally resilient. So you know I am very in tune with my physical health because mm-hmm. of my need to keep my mental health stable. And mm-hmm. most people they sort of lose sight of that, and they yeah. particularly. People who are listening, you know, to this podcast and follow you, you know, they're so bent on the work ethic, you know, to the detriment of their health and, you know, health is wealth, right? That's what we're talking about here Yeah. by health, right? It's not like health is a currency, but it's a intangible currency, right? So you, you, and it's something that you need to invest in just like all the other things, courses, educations, coaching, it's the same thing, right? It's the same concept of investing in your health, having a positive relationship with your body. You can't be successful in business if you have a broken down body, if you're not healthy, if you don't have ethic, strong work ethic. I mean, it, it just goes hand in hand. It really, really does. Um it's so interesting that I, you know, I, I have noticed over the years that when I go look at really successful CEOs, you know, they get featured in the news or on TV or whatever, almost all of them look pretty healthy and they look pretty fit. And you can tell that they're not just building their business. They're also eating well. They're also exercising. You know, they do all of these things in a balance and they, they, it, it goes well all around. Um, I did it the other way for quite a while of just trying to focus on work and it didn't, it didn't go so awesome for me. <laughs> it was, yeah. did not work. It did not work. Yeah. 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 It's, um, and unfortunately a lot of people that come to me, they tend to be in a hole at that point. And the ones that come to me early are on in the process and, you know, not to sort of diverge into too much of what I do, but a lot of people that come to me have injuries or they're coming off of surgery or they're coming off of a joint replacement. And, you know, the traditional medical therapies, they don't really prepare them to be able to go back into the workforce, to be able to be productive, you know, individuals, to feel confident in their abilities, their skills, particularly the joint replacement people, man, and breast cancer. That's been a huge one for me. I worked with a lot of 
you know, women who had breast cancer and they're, you know, they're sort of just, oh, you're, um, you're a survivor. You're like, yeah, I'm a survivor, but I can't lift my arm. Like, you know, like what right. how am I supposed to be able to get this, you know, like be able to use this arm now? So, so what I'm saying is that before you get to that point in your health, where you're crawling back, you're fighting back, you know, yes. to, to a, a reasonable state of health, invest some time in some preventative care. Everybody talks about preventative care. Well, it's staring you right in the face. You know, fitness is preventative care. Yeah. Yes. What a great point. Because a lot of times when we think of fitness, we think of, I've already lost my fitness and I'm going back. I'm going to try to regain it. Mm. And gosh, it's hard to regain. <laughs> Having yeah, spent the last two years doing that. So I'll share, I think I've probably shared some of my story before, but if this is the only episode someone's listening to, um, <laughs> I had an ACL reconstruction two years ago. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that either. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so oh. I shredded my ACL back in college doing uh, martial arts sparring and didn't know it. They just kind of gave me crutches and were like, eh, six weeks, you'll be fine. Here's some pain meds. And that was it. Had no idea, re-injured it. And by the time I got to the 10th re-injury, my husband was like, you know, you should probably get an MRI and figure out what's going on in there. It's like, oh, okay. So I did, ended up needing the ACL reconstructive surgery because it was gone. I had nothing left. And I was tearing up other stuff in there by not having had it fixed. So I had meniscus damage and all kinds of things. Uh, so they put it all back together, but that was almost 10 weeks on crutches before I could walk with that. It was seven weeks before I could take any step with unassisted at all, even like the tiniest. And I cried when I did it. I was so happy to wow. like take a step again. Um, and then uh, almost 10 weeks, like going from the two crutches and down to one crutch and like, yay, I can finally walk again. And I think I had four months of physical therapy, but it has taken me Wow. I'm coming up on my two year anniversary in about a month and about a month from when we're recording. And uh, it's taken me the full two years to get back to yes. muscle yes. strength and tone and flexibility sure. and right. movement right. and speed. Oh my gosh, the speed was insane. Like I couldn't, I could do something and be like, I want to, and I, I can't move that fast. I can't get there in time to catch the thing that's falling. Like right. it's just not yeah. doable. Like everyday practical activities become limiting when yeah. your health starts to decline and you can't enjoy the things, you know, like your family and your friends and your leisure time and then your work ethic and your work time becomes a chore. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, everybody gets tired. Look, I get tired three o'clock comes around, you know, you're slumping and you're tired, whatever. Right. Um, but if you, if you correct, if you know how to correct your posture, if you know how to breathe, so that you uh, create more energy if you, you know, have some, you know, mental stamina, right? right. Things play into your ability to work. You know, they always say, you know, work smarter, not harder. And the, I, that is very true when it comes to, you know, using your physical health to work smarter and not harder and to be able to develop, you know, that drive, you know, that yeah. you need as an entrepreneur, and, you know, that that is really a lesson that I learned early on from when we first started the question of, well, how did I get involved in this was I had to learn to become an entrepreneur like from the ground up because I was a lawyer. I was a paper pusher. I didn't even know where paper came from. You know what I mean? I was just like, <laughs> it just showed you know, up in the office. <laughs> I was a billable hour. And then I became like I ultimately learned from these entrepreneurs from the ground up and I actually built their business for them, which is a good lesson for people is that find yourself a mentor, um, you know, or some, somebody that, you know, is doing what you want to do. You always hear that, but right. to the next level, approach them and find out how you can help them grow their business. Don't go in there and be like, I'm looking for a job. But like, Hey, I'm looking to help grow your business. And, and in exchange for that, I'm looking for your mentorship. I'm looking for, you know, you know, to learn about your business. So it's a two way street right off the bat. They may not be able to pay you, but they'll be certainly going to be able to um, teach you skills with, and, you know, mindset, all those things that are more important. I mean, granted, you know, it's important that we're earning money and being able to sustain ourselves. But if you really want to pursue that passion, that dream, the way to do it is to 
find some a mentor, find somebody that has, has gone through the channels of what they're doing yeah. and then latch on. And that's what I did. I latched on for six years and then I built their business and I bought their business. So I bought them out. Wow. Yeah. So I basically bought myself. Like I built the business with me in it and then I bought it. And then I was, you know, then I was a solopreneur and then I had 15 trainers working for me at one time in the studio and I was an owner operator and it was, you know, did it for 18 years. It was, a, it was rough, but it was a time of life when I could handle it and I learned a lot. So, mm -hmm. you know, without going off on a tangent, I'm, you know, the, the idea of just like, how do I start? Where do I, you know, I'm, I'm stuck, you know, well, you know, you don't have to be stuck. You just have to, it just takes a, a conversation and a dream. Right. And then somebody, believe me, that business is looking for somebody like that. There is. Yeah, there is. I love how you brought up the mental game and I, I'm going to have you show us some exercises in a couple minutes. So like, I, I, I'm, I'm excited for this part that you're going to actually teach us some stuff that we can do. But I just want to talk about that mental game real quick because the it, working out, I'm going to do a whole metaphor thing here and building a business. Neither one of them are a quantum leap to success. You can't eat one salad and lift weights one day and then be super fit when you wake up the next morning. It just, it doesn't work like that. You're going to be sore. You have to eat healthy for a long period of time. You have to work out every day or, you know, whatever your schedule is, right? Like several times a week for weeks on end. Uh, and the lesson, you know, I had been an entrepreneur for, I don't know, 15 years or something at this point. And the lesson that I got from the, the surgery and the healing process is those micro gains, like just the little tiny incremental, I can do this today that I couldn't do yesterday. And then tomorrow I can do one more thing. And Absolutely. then, oh, we have a little bit of a setback. Oh, wait, now I can step up on one step that's two inches high. Like just those tiny, tiny gains. It takes a lot of mental fortitude to go through that and not give up to get to the place where you want to be. I feel like exercise is the same way. You can't Absolutely. just one Absolutely. day I do it and then I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, you know, winning those championships where you show off your muscles type of thing. Yeah, it doesn't genius, work that way. Right. It's every day. And that's one of the things that helped me along the way of learning about the importance of movement and mindfulness is that it's not so much the intensity, but the consistency, you know? So it's really about just kind of taking some, you know, small steps throughout your day to just for yourself to be a little selfish when it comes to your health and to take, you know, like whatever valuable time, like I'm sitting on a, on a, uh, one of those stability balls right now. Nice. Right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working out. I'm working my abs. I'm working my back. You know, right. my, my shoulders back. You know, so I'm working on posture. You wouldn't even know it. So a lot of my clients are entrepreneurial types, and I teach them how to work out while they're working. So it's really interesting. You know, where we'll do it's like, okay, you got five minutes today. We're gonna record a five minute workout, and you go back and review the workout that we did. And then ten minutes, we got a ten minute workout. You know, what do you got today? You got balls, mm -hmm. bars, and bands. Or do you have a wall? Or are you, where where are you at your your kids' soccer game? Okay, you know I'm sure we'll figure something out. Like it's yeah that entrepreneurial mindset of like figuring out what you can do with what you have. Yes, yes, and I love that you said it's a cumulative effect. I feel like your your mic cut out right there, so I just wanted to recap in case people didn't catch oh, the cumulative okay. effect of entrepreneurship and exercise like those things you have to build them there's there's no shortcut there's no like quick fix you mm -hmm. but if you're creative like you said you can fit it in anywhere you can make it work with what you have so so do that for us show us I, I love that you said okay do you have five minutes can we do something do you have a wall do you have a band do you have yeah you know? yeah I'm going to okay. show you so yeah walls are amazing so I'm just going to tilt my camera a little bit over just so you can see okay okay so, so and we're going to describe everything so for people who are listening only on yeah, audio yeah, we're going to describe it yeah. yeah so the first thing i do in the morning is i do it's called the uh, the police lineup i just i stand for up to 30 seconds right to reset my posture the first okay. thing i work up right find a wall i 
have your palms facing up and your fingernails pressing against the wall behind you. And I have my heels, my butt, and the tops of my shoulders and the back of my head. And I just stay like this. Okay. So, this is doing. This is realigning your posture from sleeping at night all curled up and you know doing all these dreams and everything and you know just kind of like holding on to stuff. So it really opens up your pathways, you know, breathing and your nervous system and all that. So it's a great way to just kind of set yourself up for the rest of the day and then just to maintain you'll know the difference between what, how you normally you know are standing versus Punched over. How you should be standing. Right. right. So for those who are listening on audio, if you can't like quite because you can't see you. So I'm going to sort of describe what you're doing. Um, so rather than the usual computer hunched over posture, Len's doing what he calls the police lineup. So he's yeah. like at his back to the wall and then palms, you know, arms straight out, palms facing forward. But the back of the hand is touching the wall and he's got all of his back heels, rear shoulders, head. Everything is all lined up against the wall. Um, and how long do you stay like that? Up to 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. And it just take that time first thing in the morning. And then from there, what you'll do is um, you'll do actually an exercise that engages your, um, your chest, your shoulders, your abs, and one glute. So it's very simple. You take your elbows and you press them back behind you so that you, you have a slight arch in your lower back. And you extend your chest out and your elbows are push back behind you. And then you just lean into the wall behind you. So that just the tips of your elbows are pressed into the wall like that. And immediately uh, contracts your abs. Just by yes. And you also get your chest. You also feel it in your chest muscle. From there, you just raise one knee up. And then you hold it just like that. So you drive one knee up. So I'm actually recruiting my abs while I'm doing this. Yeah. Hold it like this. Okay, so I'm gonna recap for the audio. So Len's feet are about maybe a foot from the wall, maybe eight, eight to 12 yeah, inches, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, from the wall. And then he's got his elbows in kind of a 90 degree angle at first at his side and then pushes them back so that they're actually behind his back and then leans against the wall. So the elbows are doing the supporting. Um, and then that's got all the abs and the back and the chest and everything engaged and then lifting one leg. How long do you hold the one leg up? Up to 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. And then do you switch legs or are we just going to go yeah. sideways? And you want to visual the body parts that, that you, you're using. Like, so I'm, you know, when you do this, people would think, oh, well, I'm going to feel this just in the top of my leg. But no, when you do this, you should actually think about recruiting your abs to help lift your leg up. Yes. So it takes a little bit of mental fortitude to sort of, you know, coordinate the muscles to work together. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And so, whenever you're doing a leg lift thing like that, you're always engaging the abs. Like that's Im immediately adding, you're putting both of those together. Absolutely. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So you can go from there. Okay. Into um, something where you turn, you're facing the wall now. Okay. You're into like what I call a lean to push up position. Right. So you're just leaning into the wall with your palms. This is a great multi-purpose exercise that I came up with. So you have one leg forward in knee bent position and one leg behind you. So you have your hands about um, shoulder shoulder height apart, and then you go into a push up and then into a lunge. So you do a push up, put your head to the side, drive the knee in. So it takes care of everything. One time, push it up for the arms, lunge for the leg, raise the knee up for the abs. I really love this for if you don't want to get on the floor. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so let me explain kind of for people that are on audio and not seeing audio in the video. Len's got his feet, maybe, um, you know, the, the front foot is about, I don't know, 18 inches or so from the wall. And then yeah. his back foot is out in, am I getting this right? It's like rocket launcher position, sort of yeah, like, that yeah, in like fitness. a runner stretch. You know, yeah, to... like a runner stretch type thing. Right. And then his hands are on the wall in a push up position aligned with the shoulders. So they're, you know, just right. straight, straight front palms on the wall and then just doing it just like a push up and pulling in the back leg and then extending it back out and then pulling in that back leg again and then extending it back out. And I just think this is so great for if you've got shoulders that are maybe not as tough to carry you in a full plank position, 
Um, or if you don't want to get on the floor, because wherever you are, you're like, there's no way I'm touching that floor. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, it's a great, the wall workout is amazing. You know, yeah. what you can do with a wall, you know, and I'll show you a quick ab one. It's a little, it's going to be a little bit challenging for your listeners <clears throat> that don't have the visual. But what you want to do is, this is for the you know, bleeps right here, which is always like challenging, you know, for people. For, Yes, we all want those nice smooth obliques and not all the lumpies that come out over our waistband. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Puffin tops, as we yes. say. Yes. So you want to be in a lean-to position again. Okay. Right? So you want to have your um, your elbow at a 90 degree mm -hmm. in line, like at the chest level. And then you're in a leaning to position with your feet together. Put your other hand on your hip and the key to this is to stay upright. And then Drive your hip into oh, the wall, right? Okay. So doing by driving the hip into the wall, that activates your obliques. Right? Yeah. So this is almost like um, if it's I were to do a side plank the on the floor. Yeah, okay, so we said it at the same time, so I'm totally getting it. So this is like a side plank on the floor, but instead of having a triangle between your feet and your elbow, right, because your feet would be on the floor, in this case, we've got the feet out from the wall, Right. So it's kind of a, a you know, cut off rectangle sort of a deal because the right. feet are out and then the arm is still doing the bracing um, right. for that side plank. And instead of trying to lift up to fight gravity, now we're going into the wall, which right. is causing the obliques to work. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So literally you could you could be you know doing a video conference. You know, you could be even with one with your back against the wall, you could literally be texting, you know, at the same time. Yeah, you totally could. I and feel like this is brilliant for if you are traveling. Like, you know, when you're at home, it's a little bit easier to have equipment and have things. But if you're in a hotel room and it's really small and so you don't have space to do all the things, or if you're at a conference and you're on like a 10 minute break, you could totally go do this and move around a little bit in the lobby or in a corner somewhere and kind of get a little workout in after you've been stuck sitting yeah. away. Yeah, totally. And yeah, a, a lot of the, I have a guide that I do offer, um, at, you know, as a, uh, a incentive, you know, to find out more about me. It's on my website. Awesome. My name, lenglassman.com. And you'll okay. see as soon as you go on the website, there'll be two guides. One is a mindful movement guide. <clears throat> and one is um, a, a guide that is designed more for mindset. So it's a mindful mindset guide and a mindful movement guide. When I click on the mindful movement guide, and it's literally pictures of me doing all these different, you know, movement patterns that you can just follow with instructions. Love it. Okay. That's super simple. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Let's talk a little bit about the money piece because we didn't get a chance to get into that as much. You know, we, we've sort of gone around it in that being healthy allows you to be a better entrepreneur. Um, a lot of the same mindset skills that go hand in hand with each other. Will you share with us just a little bit of your kind of money story and how you figured out that piece? Because I know it's really different when you go from, like you said, I can't think of hardly any jobs more corporate than being an attorney, right? It's like yeah. the, the office yeah. building and the the team and the staff and all that stuff. And you were focused on your specific job, not having to do everything. And then when you go to being self-employed, all of a sudden you've got to figure out how to do all the stuff. It's like, okay, yeah. who's cleaning this place? And how do I buy paper? And where do I restock the soap? And <laughs> it's all you. Me, and... me, 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 right? Yes. Yeah, well, what, yeah. And when you're paying the bills, you get very creative, you know, like, so you start thinking out of the box, like instead of going to the supermarkets or the retail stores, you start going to like the restaurant depot store, uh -huh. and you start you know, buying in bulk. And then, you know, you start looking up YouTube videos on how to fix treadmills or unclog toilets. I mean, it's no joke. Like, yeah. You really have to, you know, uh, invest, you know, in yourself and trust yourself little bit that you can do it and not just pick up the phone and ask for you know ask and, and have somebody come in you know to do the work for you so where the things that you can take care of you need to take care of and that's really a very important lesson you know that I learned early on is like you know it's me myself and I you know I did have 
a wonderful person that helped me through the thick and thin when things, you know, got ugly and, you know, we needed to, you know, got flooded twice and, you know, oh. and people help with, you know, all different types. Of, but at the end of the day, it, it, it does fall on you. It, it really, you, again, you have to be physically resilient, you know, in order to be able, you know, to handle some of these issues that come up. So that, that was a big one for me, you know, and, and, and once I started to kind of get a sense of really my mindset, I call it the spirit of being an entrepreneur. It's like the spirit, it's like a drive. It's like this yeah. hunger, you know, and you're constantly, constantly seeking information and learning and, you know, and, and, you know, kind of, unfortunately there's a trial and error and there are lots of mistakes that you make along the way. And, um, you know, you just kind of have to really, you know, sort of, you know, trust yourself like that you're yeah. able to do these things and then you will prevail. Honestly, right. that was, that's right. the key. I love that. Trust yourself. So, yeah. And financially, I mean, I, I said, I, I, it was hard, like financially being able to, you know, turn a profit and cash flow and all the, I learned really the hard way what all those things meant. I had no idea, you know, and right. I, I really have to, you know, understand, you know, the value of what you do, your services, because I was underselling myself for years and years. And then yeah. ultimately I realized, wait, this doesn't make sense. I'm offering such a great service at such a reduced price. And I'm paying for that reduction in price. I'm the one that's paying for my by devaluing my own services. <laughs> like that makes no sense. Like yes. why are you doing that, you yes. know? Yes. And you know, I, it was my mindset, you know, my my clients they were more than happy to see me succeed. Why wouldn't they? I was providing an exceptional service and right. giving right. them exceptional results, you know, and you know, they were thriving in their own life. So why, why wouldn't you pay somebody what they're worth? If you know you are providing that level of service to someone, exactly, exactly. And I think that's a, a great point for entrepreneurs to remember: is if you're providing the value, it's okay to charge for it. You know, if people are getting results, and it's the results that you promise them, just it's okay for them to pay you for the results. That's how that works. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid. You're the yeah. only, you're the only limiting factor in this. Right. If they're not the right client for you. You know, then. And it wasn't meant to be. And when I say that, you know, you know, there there were clients that I unfortunately, you know, I had to, you know, not so much let go, but it just it wasn't a right fit. And mm -hmm. getting God, it kills you to let go of a client. You're like, oh my yeah. God, you know, I, I gotta pay my friend, I gotta pay this guy. But if it's gonna drain me of, of my my emotional right. you know, energy and it's going to wind up costing me more and stress and aggravation and, and you know and don't do it it's right long time don't do it you. don't do it yeah. yeah what are you most excited about right now oh well i i um so i i do love what i'm doing so i mean i still really so passionate of even what i do and people that i help and i have sort of ventured more into the corrective exercise and, and, you know, sort of keep prehab rehab end of things. I still do love doing general fitness, but, you know, I do enjoy working with people that you know, have Parkinson's that are going through life altering medical health issues that have mm -hmm. drug replacement and a, a new outlook on life. Um, I also love to write. So I did, did about a year and a half ago, write a book called Soul Trainer. Awesome. Soul Trainer, yay. And um, it's fictional fitness. So I created a new genre um, and it's basically a series of short stories, three short stories. Cause I couldn't stand like picking up a book and being like fitness for dummies, you know, like how to work out, you know, and you have these like silly stick diagrams and like you buy the book and then you literally may, you know, cut a thumb through it and like throw it to the side and never look at it again. Right. I said, wait a minute. I said, what about if I create these really interesting characters with like really cool stories and they then somehow through somebody, they find fitness as a way to like rise above all of their challenges in life. So yeah. one of the characters um, is an immigrant, an illegal immigrant who came to this country from Cuba. 
and he had nothing. And, you know, he like literally escaped Cuba and then, you know, arrived in Miami Beach and ultimately, you know, through his body and his will and, and everything, he became a personal trainer and like the trials and tribulations of all that. And then in the story itself, I weave in aspects of health and fitness and training and like workout techniques. So it's kind of like you're learning about, you know, fitness and, you know, um, health, but in a storybook format. So it's interesting. <laughs> so it's fun. Yes. Yes. I love that. Let's make fitness more fun so that people. Fun. Enjoy so, it. Yes. Yeah. So can we That's find your book movie. all over the place online, things like that? Yeah. Amazon, you know, Perfect. Um, website, it's everywhere. I okay. published it. It's very exciting. I interview everybody who, who buys a copy. Okay. So I have a soul trainer platform which basically is a way for you to promote your own business through um, my book, because I ask about like what you got out of the book and how it relates to your life and your business and your values. And so it's a great way to sort of pitch yourself and buy my book at the same time. How fun. I like that idea. I like it. All right. So we'll put a link to your book in the show notes mm -hmm. and a link to your website as well so that people can get those two um, guides. The you know, So it's lenglassman.com. Um, and then people can get the mindful movement guide, which includes the activities that you shared with us today. And if they want it, they can also get the mindful mindset guide. So yes. all that will be on there. This Thank you. This has been awesome. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're really we're up. We're, um, what would I say? This is like a podcast fitness party. That's what I wanted to turn this into. You got to check out Camille's arms. Check, okay, I'll do the arms. All right. Is it, Ooh, did, I, did I do it? Look at that. Look at that. Just the guns. Uh, yeah. I've been, I've been working on that like underarm. Right? You know, that I don't want that stuff. Up. Sure look at this. Look, look at you. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So. Yeah, look yeah. When I decided I was getting on top of my health, I was pretty committed to it. And so it's been two years uh, of it. I mean, I lost 30 pounds and I started exercising. I got the surgery. I did all the rehab. I did all the extra stuff. I still have to do lunges multiple times a week to make sure that that knee still like functions all the way because otherwise it gets really sore and doesn't function the way that I would love for it to. But I can go for a run every once in a while now, even mm -hmm. though my doctor's like, don't do that too much because cartilage. But <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. And so it's, it's pretty, it's been pretty amazing, pretty amazing journey. So That's yeah. Very awesome. I love to hear that stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you want to get in touch with Len, make sure you jump on his website, lenglassman.com. Um, he loves to talk by email. So shoot him an email, len at lenglassman.com. Super, super simple. I will link all of that in the show notes so you can find it there. Um, thanks to our listeners and viewers. I'm your host, Camille Diaz. I'm a business optimization coach, financial educator, author, and speaker. You can contact me and find out what I'm up to through my website, camillediaz.com. Follow me on social media at Cam Unfiltered. And don't forget to follow Money Heart at Money Heart Show. And the website is moneyheartshow.com. Len, do you want to share today's money mantra? Absolutely. So being physically fit and fiscally fit go hand in hand. Right? Yes. So you can't have one without the other. Right? Yes. You want to you want help as well. If you want to, if you want to be, you know, independently wealthy or if you want wealth in your life okay you have to also take care of your body take care of your health so you can take care of yourself and you can take care of others around you your co-workers everybody all right it really requires commitment on both ends both on your business end and on your health end absolutely i love it thank you so much thank you